Okay, so I'm going to tell you a story. I started playing bass guitar when I was 11 years old. I made 12 years old. I made the switch from guitar. Okay, I started playing when I was 10 years old guitar, and that was that started me on a whole big list of problems, and I'll tell you why. Because I used to take my guitar to school, and I knew the entire Beatles catalog, which there were still Beatles songs then, you know, oh. new songs. Um, and so I used to go to the school and bring my guitar and ask the teacher if I could get up. And the teacher was so impressed that I could sing and play these songs that she sent me from class to class. As soon as I realized that this was the best game, I didn't have to sit in the boring classes, I got to sing. I was like, this is great, I'm going to do this, you know. So anyway, um, about a year or so later, I go to the summer camp where they have all the arts and music and all this stuff. And uh, I was in the plays and I was playing French horn at the time, but I, was playing, I brought my guitar and I heard this sound. And it wasn't that sound, actually. It was a very uncool sound. But it was a low frequency sound, and I recognized it as being a bass guitar. And I was really interested. I was actually on the lake, so that the sound was just traveling across the lake. So I decided to row in real quick and see what was going on. And I went to the little music room. There was a guy, I think his name was Gene, looked like Keith Richards to me. Had one of those EB3 basses, you know, with the big pickup there and the little pickup there. Uh, looked like the Jack Bruce bass, you know. And he was just sitting in there, just just hitting notes. And I thought, what a cool sound. And I said, can I try that? And he said, yeah. So he goes, you know, I'm not really digging this so much. If you want to play it while you're here, you're welcome. So I kind of immediately switched over to bass guitar and that little thing and, and put together a little band. And my, my thought was, my thought process was that I'm going to sing and play because that's what I've been doing. And bass seemed like a real easy way to, to play. I'll show you what I mean. Get rid of all that. I was singing, let's see, back then it was probably Long as I remember the rain kept falling down Right, Creed's Clear or whatever it was on American Radio And so I was playing all these really simple songs um, Later on that summer, uh, my older cousin, he kept Jimi Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix is God And so I was kind of aware of Purple Haze, but I didn't really know what the story was of Jimi Hendrix So we went to go see the Woodstock movie, you know, and big performance at the end there with Jimi Hendrix and my jaw hit the floor. I just didn't know what to do with the guitar anymore because I thought, you know, two things I knew. This guy was a god, and I really didn't understand how to play guitar. So I immediately just made the dive and after this whole experience switched to become a bass player. And so now we're around 12 years old. I come back home. I didn't have a bass when I went home. So the first thing I did was to uh, take my six-string guitar and take the two, the E string and the B string off of it. And I thought, and then turn the treble all the way down on the guitar. Turn the treble all, the tone knob, it was just the tone knob on my amp, turn that all the way down. And then play songs with my fingers. And I think the songs we were doing that summer were like... Which isn't the right bass line, by the way. It actually goes like... I didn't learn that until years later, but I, you know, I could hear the riff, so that's... Still. So I got together a band doing that, and I only had this guitar. Got a cheap Japanese guitar after that. A Couple of years later, I guess I'm 13, 14 years old, I'm getting pretty good on my cheap bass guitar. And I decided to make the plunge, so I worked all summer and save up. I had $500 in my pocket, which back then was the equivalent of, it had to be like 12 to $1,800 back then, um, 70s. Um, and uh, there was this beautiful white Fender in the music store, the local music store, and I fell in love with it. It looked just like the one the bass player in Elton John's band was playing. And I loved that the bass player was great. Uh, so I saved up the extra money, I brought it to the store, I took the bass home, and I was psyched. I had this beautiful Fender bass. Couldn't wait to show it to the guys in my band, you know, they were all psyched. I, even, I think I even put the case on a stand, like it was that important to me just to have it at waist level. I wouldn't have to go to the floor. You know? Anyway, I struggled with this guitar. Struggled with it on a daily basis. It was really hard for me to play. Um, somewhere around there, that's, that's the, those four frets, that's B to D and F sharp to A on these two strings. I had the hardest time playing these notes. My hand used to cramp. It hit it really hard and it didn't sound very good. So I thought, man, I, I've really got to practice. I mean, I'm not that good on the bass guitar. 
found out years and years later on, I understood this now, and this is kind of, I guess, what I'm going to pass on to you. Some guitars are just broke. They don't work. This guitar, and a lot of old Fenders had the same problem. There's, there was probably a knot in the neck around there somewhere. So there's actually a dead spot right in that. And a lot of Fenders have that, but to a degree, they're usable. This was really strange because I didn't know it at the time and it was really, really hard for me to play. And I, you know, it was a revelation to me. And while we're in a music store, I'm gonna pass this on to you because this is the tribal knowledge that you need to know now. Um, the most important thing you can do is find a guitar that plays well, that you look at and it's really sexy, like you wanna pick it up and play it all the time, okay? Because you wanna be motivated to pick the guitar up. You know, yeah. you know, that looks hot, you know, pick it up. And then it's got to feel really easy and comfortable to play because it's possible. Guitars don't have to be like this unless you want them to be that way, you know? So um, that was a big lesson I learned. Um, uh, this story is more elaborate than that I was telling Jan. Um, I was playing clubs with it. I tried everything I could possibly do to make it sound good. I changed all the pickups. I put a badass bridge back then. You had to cut a hole into the wood and all that. I did all this sloppy work trying to fix it and I never realized that it was inherent in the neck, so. Um, a friend of mine at a music store brought this $150 bass to me at a gig, and it looked like a lembic. It had like a, a neck through body and all that, but it was obviously a very cheap bass. Had a terrible bridge on it. I plugged it in, and it was like I was totally freed up. I, would, I could play anything I wanted to, and everything I played sounded huge and big. And the way I the way I heard it in my head, it was coming out of the speakers now. So. Um, I moved on and that's when I started kind of on this quest to find different instruments that I like and you know really cool ones and you know, Olaf and I we we both you know kind of pray at the altar of like great instruments as well as not so great instruments that sound great you know so anyway that that's my little tag about uh, instruments so when you come to these music stores play everything on the shelf because you know play the ones that you're attracted to but play them all because they're all different the wood settles differently the construction's different and you'll find the one eventually that really makes you want to play and really sounds like what you think you sound like, you know?